Okay, before we start our next project, we have a little bit of an intro here. Now, I'm going to warn you that this moves a little too fast for me to narrate, so if you want to find out the story, you'll need to pause and read it yourself. But, welcome to VA-11 Hall A, which has a different name, which you'll see popping up momentarily. To my knowledge, this is the first of its kind, the booze -em up type game. If you're unaware, this is a cyberpunk type game, as you can tell from the text below, as well as some of the art stylings. And our job in all of this is to provide people the solace at that bottom of the glass. That's right, we are bartenders. And our place of business is right here. Hall A of VA-11. Which we call Valhalla. A small oasis in the middle of the concrete desert. A fountain of spirits waiting for tired souls. And it's here where the story unfolds. So you get an achievement right here. Welcome to Valhalla. And if you notice, the game has finally been completed. It's something that's been in development for a couple of years now. And it's probably best to show you before I go into more detail. Well, that's fine. Now, in case you're wondering, yes, there are multiple endings here based on the choices we make, so... This could be going around for a little while yet. For those of you waiting for Fata Morgana, don't worry, that will be coming up back in a couple days when my voice is fully recovered. But in the meantime, we can kick back, play this. For those unaware, it came out on Tuesday. Today should be the 23rd, first day of the Steam Summer Sale, so hopefully the game doesn't get eclipsed by all the deals, but it is a possible risk. I would not say having the game come out when it did was the wisest of choices, but we'll see how it all plays out. So they advise you get comfortable, grab a drink, a snack, and enjoy. Unfortunately for me, since I have to talk, the snack is not really a choice. So sit back, relax, and have a good time. I strongly recommend the same. After all, that's why you come to this channel, right? Oops. Hey, over here. Boo. How's that for an entrance? Come on, Joe, look sharp. The game's starting, and the player needs to make a good first impression of its main character. I know you served a bunch of tuxedo-clad corgis over the weekend, and the bar will eventually close. And I'll admit my little prank on you might have been gone a little overboard. But remember, life is 90% how you take it. Stay focused and look at the brighter side of things. I have no idea what the brighter side is, but you should totally find it. In any case, you should totally check that parcel you just got. See ya. And that's the end of the game, folks. Just kidding. Oh, just a dream. Hmm? There's something near the door. Chapter 1, Primera. We got another achievement. Your membership to Shining Fingered will automatically renew on the 17th. Make sure your account has at least $800 by then. Make sure to save your data using the Life Backup app. You can now browse the Augmented Eye. So, I wonder if that's supposed to be a reference to G Gundam? So, who's that letter from? Nobody. know how to fully interact with stuff. Interesting shirt. Looks like there's nothing here for us to interact with. Okay, you the lock. Augmented Eye. Mass immigration continues as Wonderlanders are the newest threat. Cyborg and Heels returns next year.
popular show Cyborg and Heels returns to the Delta March. It's a massive stage show about a cyborg fighting terrorism while wearing heels. Quentin Hater. So, Metal Gear reference there. Not, if you're not aware, Quentin Flynn is the voice actor of Raiden from Metal Gear, David Hater is Snake. <laughs> What's not to love about it? It's a cyborg wearing heels, cutting stuff. We'll call it Metal Gear Revengeance. Alice Rabbit was good at cracking the most complicated security protocols in the world. Prime Minister Quincy. He's not hiding anything. He's not afraid of an email leak. All kinds of rabbit costumes during the stream and throw it a bunny girl. Okay, they have some real weirdos in their government. Highest inflation rates among the world, consistent shortages of groceries, rampant violent crime. So, cyberpunk at its finest. Whoops. Okay, we only have these two. I guess I just pick stuff at random?
sweet light as early as it gets. So, are we supposed to do ice with this, or...? There's ice actually from a recipe ingredient, not something to add on top. Unfortunately, I imagine most of these are copyrighted, so I don't really care. Uh, 
not good enough. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Now, I don't know if the jukebox actually has a rule on the endings you can get. I know the drinks are supposed to. Hey, you. Give me a beer. Sure, right on it. Beer. He looks like quite the big guy, though. So we need one aldehyde, two bronson extract, one powder delta, two flanner. Carmatrine. All mixed. Bubbly classic vintage. Our other options we could try to give him something manly, but this is a good start, I think. Here you go. No, no, this isn't gonna cut it. Give me a big one. Um, sure. Is a big one because it is over five ingredients. Maybe just giving them two will count. And now? I said a big one, Brad. Big, like my dick. Forget it. These two will have to do. Lucky I was in a meeting close by. This hellhole can certainly use a presence like mine. Although, to be fair, work has taken me to worse hellholes like New Jersey 3. Huh. What kind of work do you do, mister? You're talking to Donovan D. Dawson, chief editor and owner of the Augmented Eye. Nothing gets published there without my blessings. The day started with quite an interesting fellow, it seems. So you're the one to blame for the barrage of daily articles on Alice Rabbit, then? People love those articles. They love reading about that urban legend. Can you blame them? The idea of some wildcard hacker working through their own for their own goals and nobody else's? That's the kind of corny shit that brings the clicks from all kinds of people. And clicks bring money, and money brings nice stuff. Stuff like cars and houses and plastic surgery for the missus and her kids. I'm not complaining about the fact you write about the hacker, just that you write about them every single day. Some of it isn't even news, just speculations or copycats. I can't read your newspaper's daily feed without running into at least one article about Alice Rabbit. Well, first of all, I don't write about it. My interns do. Poor bastards think it'll help them ma make them full-time employees. I'm just capitalizing on this topic while it's popular. And second, you're tired of one article about a supposed hacker? But not all the daily stories about murders and other horrors? Always filter out that section. I don't want to start my day scared and bitter. I have enough pressure and problems as is. I don't need to add Glitch City's lovely citizens to the list. You're smarter than you look, kid. But if more people were lucky, I'd go bankrupt from the lack of traffic. Still, maybe my job would be easier. How so? People get dis dis people get bored of a certain kind of news after seeing it repeatedly. In case you're wondering, the word he's looking for is desensitized. When I started in this job, I only took the news of some elderly woman being killed to guarantee clicks. Now, you need an elderly woman carrying a sick baby boy getting hit by a truck. Death's not enough. They need a full sob story behind it. That's why I like those urban legends. They're easier to write about, and you can make up any shit you want. Spam them all, they're hot. And even people like you, people who avoid the murder stories, will see them. That brings money. Like I said, money's good. I guess he has a point. What about the opinion columns? Aren't those a good source of traffic, too? Oh, I hate those brats. They just write about how they're better than everyone else. They might also write about how everyone likes the certain something that should be sodomized. Worst part about that is they know half our clicks come from them, so they get all diva-like on my ass. I think you're being too harsh. What about... No, wait. I was thinking of another newspaper. Yeah, the columnists on your page are annoying. See? The kid on the restaurant critique column. Ah, uh, shit, I forgot that brat's name. Restaurant? I believe that's... That kid. Couldn't care less about his name. Anyway, this column is the least visited of the bunch. He gets less hits than the obituaries. However, 
he still insists that I keep paying for his adventures to outrageous restaurants. I wouldn't have any problem with that if you actually wrote about half the places he visits. How so? He rarely writes about the places the newspaper sends him to. I've even heard he tries to get free meals by proclaiming that he's a food critic. The poor bastard only gets laughed at when he says that. I do remember some guy coming here asking for free drinks, and saying he was a critic or whatever. They're missing the floor. Do you look like a fat child with a really small face? No. Buzz in this one, then. Anyway, all this talk made me thirsty. Try to give me a beer this time, please. Coming right up. Socks with candles is practically a public indecency, but still. Oh, please, as a bartender, but you have a strong voyeuristic streak. Your kind always loves to hear that stuff. Just like hairdressers. This sounds hypocritical coming from you. Even if that's the case, I don't sensationalize what people do. I don't make it more than that person you know from TV acts like a human. Sensationalize is the key word here. Just the other day, I saw this committee judge bitching over what some girl was wearing in the store. No matter what you say, these people don't exist solely to entertain the public. But this problem exists because they're the ones constantly cultivating the idea that they're perfect and untouchable. Going to exotic locales, dressing in elegant ways, indulging in every luxury they can think of. All that just leaves the public craving for those little moments when they make a mistake and fall to the level. Can't say that's a lie, but sometimes the crowd just wants to see their human. Hey, that dude that plays the nice guy is indeed a really nice guy. To be fair, the gossip articles don't help, sensationalizing everything. 
feels like they're instigating the behavior that shouldn't be acknowledged in the first place. You like your big words, eh, Brad? Well, two can play that game of... Hmm. Hey, you're a bartender, right? No, I'm a lab rat, hell-bent on world conquest. Sarcasm wastes my time, my money, and your energy. Refrain from using it. Anyway, I just realized that a bartender like you must have earned quite a few stories in her career. Talking about changing topics. Maybe, why? Wouldn't you like a column talking about those? I bet they would sell quite well. It would be like that priest who published confessionary stories and then got excommunicated and lynched. People usually tell me all this stuff because they know I'm just a simple bartender. A personal stranger of sorts. We could have you ghostwriting. Half of our staff do that. They do? You don't really think Lana Smithy is just one person, do you? Figures. Anyway, eventually the people from the stories would know it's them and blame me. Not only would that hurt us as a business, it would hurt me. I really like hearing clients rant about their lives. Oh, and it would hurt the clients too, I guess. Well, if you ever retire, that offer is waiting for you. Yeah, like you'll remember me two weeks from now. Sure. Do you want another drink, Mr. Donovan? Mr. Donovan? Mr. Donovan? Did I say something wrong? Not at all. I just really like the sound of that. Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Is it really that special? At work, everyone calls me Mr. Donovan, their boss. Boss is just a title. It's too impersonal and cold. Mr. Donovan was my father and grandfather. It's too general. Mr. Donovan. Now that's more like it. They're referring to me, to the man in front of them. Not to my family, not to my position as boss. To me. Do you want your employees to get personal with you, Mr. Donovan? Oh, gods, no. I want them to fear me. Not because I'm their boss or the name appearing in their paychecks. Rather, because I strike mortal dread to them. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to make everyone call me that. Oh yeah, you were asking something. What was it? Drink. Another one. Do you? Yes, yes. You know what? Third time's a charm. Give me a beer. Alright? Okay, we'll give him his beer after all. Wonder how long it's going to take before I actually have these things memorized. Go nuts. Yeah, I guess this one's good enough for now. Good to hear. Mr. Donovan, can I ask you something? Depends on what you're going to ask. Is it about how to be successful? Because I only spout stuff from those shitty how-to-get-rich books. Well, it's not that. Well, not exactly. How did you start in this business? The Augmented Eye was a really important newspaper in Neo San Francisco almost ten years ago. This might be a reference to read-only memories, I don't know. I haven't played the game. I just know that there are some in here. But there was a big mess involving the head editor being defenestrated. One thing led to another, and during a tough financial spot, I bought the whole thing and assumed duties as chief editor. Neo SF is still the HQ, and most of the revenue is coming from here. Just being in Glitch City means at least 30% extra earnings. Yeah, I remember the news, it was quite a mess. What made you pick a news website as business? Sounded fun, I decided on a whim. Might as well have ended up with a hairdressing chain called Marcello. Anyway, I've got to go. Are all the orders paid for? Yeah, thank you very much. Please come again. Yeah, yeah. Jill. Yes? What the hell happened in that bathroom? The kind of mess usually requires you to have thumbs. Crafty dogs, I tell ya. I think their short legs would hinder them. The ceiling, the sinks, the toilets, the vents! Shh! You like the briar rose over there. I won't forget this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, plan. Welcome to Bahala. What can I... Big gut punch fast. Alright. <laughs> I wanna give him a gut punch, alright. Oh. Gut punch, big size. 
So we'll give him his bronze and abstract. Optional camera train, we'll give him two. You want this aged, mixed, so we only do this slightly. Here. Hmm, you can actually do it then. This crack house is a bar? Hellhole crack house. It smells like dog urine and soap. How the hell do you expect someone to feel comfortable in here? I'm surprised you decided to come to our little crack house at all, mister. What the hell do you care? The payment registry says... Sorry for the question then, Mr. Ingram McDougall. Sorry about the spill. We're working on fixing it. There was an incident over the weekend. But it's Tuesday. Please. Let me know what I can do to make your experience more pleasant regardless. If I pay you, will you come up with... Wow. Will you come with me to a motel for a couple of hours? No. Then I have no use for you beyond giving me drinks. Such pleasant clientele tonight. May I ask why you decided to come to our bar, then? Somebody recommended me this place, and I have absolutely no idea why she likes it. She says she's a regular here and all. I'm starting to doubt her tastes. Regular? Can I ask who? Concede one thing. Whoever picks the music at least has decent taste. Hey, Jill, where'd you put the dish soap? Gills run out. Below the sink where it's always been. Right. Oh, customer. Good evening, sir. Hope you enjoy your stay at Valhalla. So, any other feedback you want to provide the establishment so we can enhance your customer experience? No, nothing. That's an interesting change of heart. You can't afford to slander this place knowing she's here. You know my boss? I don't know her, but I know who she is. Dana Zane, the Red Comet. So she's related to Char Aznable? The one who fended off ball riders all by herself, knocking them out cold one by one. That's an achievement and a title I've never heard before. I know boss did quite a few things for opening this bar, but that sounds... But you have to know how she got her mechanical arm. I've heard a couple of stories, but they sound too fantastical to be true. You've had an interesting change of attitude. I saw that woman take out armed riders with her bare hands. Once you see something like that, it's hard not to keep your mouth shut in front of them. Interesting. You can relax, though. I've only seen her deal with clients personally about two or three times. One involved Class 5 weaponry, the other a pickup artist, and the latest had an alpaca. An alpaca? Not really an alpaca, but... There's this woman that owns a textile company. She got really drunk and she started screaming she was an alpaca. She started spitting on everything afterwards. My boss had to show her the exit. I'd rather not remember that night, so let's leave it at that. Can I get you anything else? Give me a pile driver, please. Please, there's a word I haven't heard today. Coming right up. So we saw this on your manly drinks, if I remember. Three Bronson. Here. Hmm, it's fun, I guess. Hey, lady. Have you ever faked an orgasm? I'm sorry, I think I heard wrong. I asked if you ever faked an orgasm. That's a question I'm not gonna answer. I'll take that as a yes. I was just thinking about how good a lie can be. I mean, even the most sincere people lie once in a while. Lies can buy you time. Lies can make you happy. Reality will come crashing through the door eventually. For that moment, the lie can give meaning to you. I say lies are like your porn stash. You know they exist, but you shouldn't acknowledge them. Does that mean you've really faked orgasms? Because you look like you have a lot of experience. Still, that's quite the random thought to just suddenly have. Are you perhaps lying about something right now? Not really. I was just thinking about people making polite comments about this crack house. Of course you were. Hey, I'm gonna need another drink here. Already? 
Don't you think you're drinking a bit too quickly? That's my problem, not yours. Give me a fringe weaver. Alright. So I haven't seen this one yet. Whoa! So this is pretty accurate based on what they've told us so far. With the nine karma tree, this is almost like pure alcohol. This well, let's just say if he smokes a cigarette, his breath might ignite here. Aged, mixed. Try not to drink it too fast. That's up to me. Hey, lady, have you ever felt empty? Empty how? Like hungry? No, I mean empty like there's a part of you missing. Can't say I particularly have. I just feel that there's this part of myself that lacks something. An urge to get or to do something that I just can't satisfy. You try taking up a hobby. It might not solve your problems, but it might keep you busy enough to avoid thinking about it. Any suggestions? Well, collecting stuff, reading, bungee jumping, combat sports, exercising. Sounds a lot cheaper than the alternative. Which is... Bitches and alcohol. I tried sex tourism once. It was like a bloody Russian roulette of STDs, so I left midway through. I once burned my Christmas bonus hiring three women for an orgy. Porn is more amusing and way cheaper. I also hired a girl to act like my daughter for a day th for three years in a row now. That is creepy as... Nothing seems to do it. Um... Have you tried rescuing a puppy? You can't fuck puppies. At least you shouldn't. I'm drawing a blank, then. Can't think of anything that might help. I wasn't expecting you to help me, or to believe me. Eh? I could have been lying through my teeth this whole time. People lie, lady. Anyway, I'm leaving now. The smell's killing me. Please go again. Don't count on it. Good. Boss, I'm gonna take my break. Alright. So we haven't met this person yet, but I think that's us in the middle. I was under the impression we were playing as an android, but... I don't know. It's now safe to keep playing. At least I didn't get locked up this time. Right-clicking their title. Hmm. We'll sack that one. Good enough. Okay then, back in action. Good evening. Good eve. Um, would you mind taking your helmet off? Oh, sorry. It's so comfortable I usually forget I have it on. this better? Yeah, thank you. What can I get you, miss? Master Specialist, Sei P. Asagiri of the 765th Division Valkyrie Corps at your service. Wait, that's too long. Just call me Sei. What can I get for you, the Sei? Let's see, I'm in the mood for a sweet drink. Oh, but not sweet as in cool. Although a cool drink would be nice too, but not cool as in great, and especially not as in big. More so since I have to get up early tomorrow and I can't afford a hangover. Sorry, did you get that? A sweet drink, preferably a cold one, that's not too big, right? That's it. Well, I can do that, give me a sec. Sweet, girly, happy. Sweet. 
sweet girly happy. It would be nice if there was some sort of back option. Maybe there is that I just don't know about. Sweet girly happy. Sweet girly soft. Happy. Sweet classy happy. Sweet promo happy. But unfortunately this thing is friggin' huge. And unfortunately, since she doesn't want to get hammered, we can't give her too much karma train. But the thing is, she wants something icy. Do I have something that's prepared with ice? That's aged. See what I can find for you. Ooh, bad touch. <laughs> so, cobalt velvet. Wow. Yeah, that better bird has five karma trees in it. Fringe Weaver. That's the pure 
alcohol one. This one I don't think would be too bad. It's just I don't know how she's gonna react to a sour drink. Something Stella would drink. She's my dearest friend. Not that I don't have others, but she's the one I've known the longest. She likes these kind of drinks, and I want to see what's so special about them. And what do you think? I was expecting something stronger. I like it quite a bit. Say, Miss Bartender, what's your name? You know my name, now I want to know yours. Sure, just call me Jill. 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 Jill is short for Jillian. That's not right. Julian. J Julianne. No. Do not call me Julianne, please. Sorry about that. No, please excuse me. I didn't want to anger you. But why don't you like being called by your full name? It's a stupid reason. Don't dwell too much on it. Okay. I still feel bad about angering you, though. Because you look like a nice girl, Jill, and I don't like angry nice people. If it helps somehow, I really like this place. That actually helps. You're the first person to say something nice today. Thanks. What do you like about it? The smell of dog urine and soap. My mom used to be a veterinarian, and I used to go to her clinic after school, so the smell takes me back. It makes me feel comfy and nostalgic. What made you become a white knight to a veterinarian? Well, I was never a good student, so studying medicine of any kind was out of the question. That aside, it's mostly because of something that happened while I was a kid. A white knight attacked my friend who was coming for me when this other white knight saved us. I don't remember what happened next, I just woke up in a hospital with my friend watching over me. I mean, it wasn't a prophetic moment or anything like that, but ever since then I felt that this was my calling. That I wanted to help people the same way they helped me. It's interesting, though. One would think being attacked by a white knight would make you run the opposite direction. Yeah, but it was another one that saved me. So I kind of guide myself toward judging everything on an individual basis. Well, not to an extremist extent, but you get me. Yeah, I try to do the same, too. Why well, join the Valkyrie Corps specifically? Because I wanted to rescue people from dire situations whenever possible. And going into patrols and all that felt too tiresome. It's the one with the least paperwork involved. Now that I think about it, there are different kinds of white knights, right? I guess white knight is too broad a term. There's not one specific type, there are many different classes. Rescue, assault... There's even a squad full of bureaucrats. Really? Yeah, they get assigned to companies to handle the account and that kind of stuff. People usually ask for them because they speed up processes. But a few are assigned when a company is suspected of having weird, under the table deals. Interesting. There was also a squad dedicated to fight the school of bullying. They were doing a nice job, but the fan of anti-bullying campaigns passed and they lost their funding. I believe some members still work with anti-bullying cases in an unofficial capacity. That'd be nice, I think. Can't get you anything else. I don't know if I should, I can't afford that many drinks, and besides, I don't really know how much alcohol I can handle. Yeah, I can see that. You know what? I'll have something else. I remember some drink called a martini? Brantini. No, I'm pretty sure it's martini. It's brantini, trust me. I'll get you one. So it turns out we're making this thing after all. Oh wait, didn't I already make this for her? Yeah, this was the classy drink, wasn't it? See? You're right. Thanks. You know what? I think I'll bring a friend of mine here in a couple of days. Really? Why? I like the feel of this place. I want to share it with her. My 
be a bit difficult, though. She's more into, uh, classier places. Not that this place isn't nice, but... Don't worry. I know the kind of place I work in. I see. But it shouldn't be too bad. I just need to... What's that? It sounded like an explosion. I'd better check that. I paid you already, right? Yeah, go ahead. Be careful. I will. She left her helmet. Well, if she's coming back, I'll just hold on to it for her. I'll go check what the ever-loving hell that explosion was. Careful. What? Oh, she woke up. Where am I? Where am I? Good evening and welcome to Valhalla. That might not have been the best thing to say. Valhalla? Am I dead? Does that mean that Uncle Ingus's ramblings about the afterlife looking like a shoddy downtown bar are true? Called it. Afterlife? I'm not dead. As far as I can tell, no. To be fair, I don't know how death or the afterlife work exactly, but you're breathing, right? Alright then, where the hell am I? How did I get here? Who brought me here? What are you planning to do with me? Are you a organ traffickers? Robbers? Rapists? Pickpockets? You're pickpockets, aren't you? Why don't you say anything? I'm waiting for you to vent your words, otherwise you'll just... You're rapists, aren't you? Rapists, the whole lot of you! You want to tear my clothes, beat me unconscious, have your horrible way with me, and then brutally murder me, don't you? All while still violating every hole of my body as I lay there twitching, don't you? Murder, 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 murder... Interrupt me. Well, this is going nowhere. Let's see if I can get a drink to calm her down. Or to throw at her face. Uh, let's give her this. And we need to mellow her out. Drink here in a bar. Bar serve drinks. Bar? So I figured I should give you something to help you calm down. Don't worry, it's on the house. To calm down? What'd you spice it up with? Roofies? TTX? Pumpkins? God, no. I wouldn't even think of it. Your stuttering makes you suspicious, you know? I never had anything like that to your drink. They dock my paid tips. Not to mention I have to pay any lawsuits myself. That's the best case scenario. I could get fired from his benefits or go to jail. And trust me, the BTC loves to catch anyone who commits that particular felony. They'd show themselves all proud for a hefty PR boost. The thought of going through all that is just. Uh, if you say that, let's do something. If you go outside and head just three businesses to the left, you'll find a convenience store. They sell drug tests for drinks. Tell the cashier that Dana Zane sent you. <laughs> Two flying cars crashed and went boom. That's why it was so noisy. Any damage? Hole in the street. I don't know about the drivers or anything. I see. Either way, I think I'm done here. Did you check inside the toilet paper's locker? What? Oh my god. How? Why? How? I'm back. You tried to give me bandages at first, though. Did you have to pay? No. No problem, then. Try it on the drink. Says negative. There you go. But you could be in cahoots with the clerk in the store. He even knew your name. Good point. But first of all, it's not my name. It's my boss. Second, we are pretty much part of a chain. Sort of like the spicy chicken of bars. But finally, I'm not making you drink this. I offer to you as a sign of peace. I mean, you are right. It is indeed suspicious on my part. Sorry. You can just ignore the drink, go through that door, and forget this ever happened. That would be it. You're at peace, and nothing of value would be lost. Are you implying something won't have value because I ignored it? Are you saying my presence is so unborn that my lack of attention will yield no difference? Huh? What about the drink? Are you going to let this fruit of your work go to waste so easily? No, I... Well, I'll let you know I'm not that unimportant, and let your work does matter. Not sure you should drink it all so fast. So, how was it? Hmm. It was fine, but not something I'd order normally. Are you alright? Yeah, I think 
guess you were telling the truth. Sorry about that. No problem. If I were you, I'd probably react in the same way. I should apologize for my last comment, too. It came out as insensitive. I guess I'll stay for a while. I need to get my thoughts in order. Can you tell me how I got here? My boss found you unconscious and brought you here for safekeeping. And you were asleep until that car crashed outside. I see. I guess it's better to wake up here than on the streets, stripped of clothes, dignity, and or organs. How'd you fall unconscious? Were you tired? Sick? I guess I'm sick, but I'd rather not talk about it. Of course. I'll tell you what, your drinks are in the house tonight. Why would you do that? Considering an apology on behalf of everyone here for all the trouble we've caused you. Also, something tells me you might need another drink right now. Yeah, you might be right. Okay then, I'll take you up on your offer. I'll have a piano man. Will you be fine? Yeah, I just smoked the last one, so I want to enjoy this one. Come me right up then. like that. Wrong place at the wrong time, I guess. He was relaxing in a bar when suddenly the pianist slipped off the stage and started punching him. Some say he was off his meds and my dad looked like some music critic that had bashed him. I still hold my stance that he just got too excited. Jazz does that to you. I see. The piano man has an interesting story. It was originally created by a bartender in honor of a pianist friend of his that had just died. Apparently, it mixes all the flavors said friend liked the most. That's nice. So this is how it feels to go for a drink at the end of a long day at work. I'm not sure if I like the fact that I'm falling into that. Where do you work, miss? Call me Kim. I don't know if I can say I work yet, though. I'm still just an intern. Can I ask where? How did I know? How did I friggin' know? Have you heard of a newspaper called The Augmented Eye? I read it every morning. In fact, Donovan D. Dawson was here earlier. I knew I smelled his nasty cologne. That bastard leaves his reek wherever he goes. So you believe me? I do. God, you have no idea how much I hate that chauvinistic horse blower. Harsh words. The worst part is that I kind of admire the way he does stuff. He's so forceful about the things he wants that people have it done before they realize what's going on. He even got a pizza delivery boy to work, his ser to work server maintenance. A full week passed before the pizza shop asked where the hell he was. And would you believe it, the guy became decent at server maintenance despite having no previous experience. It's kind of admirable, but at the same time I hate his guts. Ugh. Knowing that I have to work for him, it's, uh... Why are you working there, then? Did I ask me I shouldn't have? No, don't fret about it. I'd rather not talk about it, though. Fair enough. What's your name, bartender? Call me Jill. Is it hard to be a bartender, Jill? I guess it's as hard as being a cook somewhere. Keep going through the motions while trying to provide something of quality. All while answering the whimsy of people's orders. I think the hardest part is dealing with the chemical hazards some people might leave behind. Why? At one point, I thought about being a bartender. 
but I was afraid they'd make me wear skimpy clothes and dance or something. Here we go again. Well, it depends on where you start working, you know. I guess I was lucky Valhalla didn't end up being a tacky disco overseen by a DJ with an afro. My boss just wanted a comfy place, I think. Your boss sounds like an interesting person, well, with wanting to put me somewhere safe and all that. She is. She's so cool and collected, but has no qualms about showing excitement about stuff. Sure, she's been a bit tense the last couple of days. But even then, when you're with her, everything feels just under control. She also has this mechanical arm. I have no idea how she got it, but... Hmm. Sorry, I got carried away. It was fun to see you break the wise bartender character you're using here. I do that? It'd be nice to meet this boss of yours sometime and thank her. Shall I call her? She'd be glad to know you're okay. No, I shouldn't pester her that way. Besides, it's Kane Layton. I don't want to abuse your generosity. You can ask for another one, although I don't know how much alcohol you can handle. I think I can handle another drink. One Brantini, please. Coming right up. Probably should have this memorized by now. And I just read the caption for this. 8 out of 10 smug assholes are recommended, but they're too busy being smug assholes. Now I could double this, but I think that'd be going a little too far. Here. Yep, this seems like the stuff. Cheers. Are you alright? Yeah, just a bit dizzy. And you're clearing your throat? It helps me focus a bit. Yeah, I'm better now. Hey, Jill. Do you work with other women? I work for a woman, but my only other co-worker is a male. Why? You lucky bitch. I mean, you have no idea the heaven you live in. When I started my internship, every intern was female. Have you ever tried competing with women for a good spot? They are relentless. Have you tried making friends with any of them? Friends? Those cunts aren't in it for friendship, they're out for blood. Sorry, I mean... The other day I got an assignment, and after all... And all I got for my efforts was an afternoon spent on the block in the bathroom. And this other time, when our supervisor praised me, I'm still looking for my briefcase. Sometimes I just want to take all those bitches and throw them in the sewers or something. Let the lizard men feast on their livers. I'm just so tired of having to deal with that. Tired of having to put up with them. Tired. Tired. No sleeping here, please. Do you want me to call you a cab? Would you be so kind? Hey, it's Jill. Can you send us a cab? Client? Just a second. Hey, Kim. I'm gonna need your full name. Kimberly Lavalette. Wow, what a flowery name. Kimberly Lavalette. No, I have no idea how to spell it. No, she's too sleepy to answer that. Okay, fine. Thanks a lot. They'll be here in... a minute. She's been through a lot today, I guess. Hey, Jill. Bathroom's done. I'm leaving. Guide Miss Vallette to her cab on her way out, please. Oh, she woke up? And fell asleep again. Sure, anything for a client. Excuse me, miss. Please, help me walk you to your cab. Pickpockets. And that's it. Are we done for the night? Seems like it. Where's Gil? And where's the girl that was here? Gil cleaned the bathroom and left because he stank. Kim woke up and had a couple of drinks and left. So she's called Kim. How'd she look to you? How was she? She was freaked out when she woke up, but she managed to calm down. Are you worried about her? Wouldn't you be? I don't know. Hey boss, do you feel like calling you boss is too impersonal? Not really, no. It's not like you call me that because I'm a stranger, just out of habit. No. Anyway, you're free to go after you finish washing up the glasses. Let me transfer you today's payment. Maybe I'll give Gil a small bonus for dealing with the bathroom. So we got the Flawless Service Achievement. 
So total earnings, drinks total, no mistakes, commissions 30%, 672 from payment, 450 from tips, I got a flawless service bonus, and then a bonus for helping the girl, brings us to two grand. So we have this secured. Jill's lost thought about ha a hollow plant. Bino will prevent her from getting too distracted. So, I want to save, then call it a night, because if you can't tell, my voice is giving out. So, we'll pick up here next time, we'll see how badly we can butcher day two. So, until then, I'm the Hero of Light. Thanks for watching.